Eagles Entertainment. Welcome, Eagles, everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. It's our tailgate edition. Happy New Year to everyone out there. Hope everyone is healthy and happy, and we look forward to a much brighter 2021 in every way. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro, and uh, well, this is our final one of the regular season of the 2020 season. We'll, of course, have the Instant Reaction Podcast for you in the wee hours on Monday morning following the Eagles game against the Washington football team. In this Eagles Insider Podcast tailgate edition, we've got a loaded one for you. We're going to check in, of course, with Jalen Hurts making his fourth start, and he wants to end it on a positive note. And former Eagles quarterback Michael Vick, who's now named Mike Vick, working with Fox and FS1, talks about his time in Philadelphia and also offers his opinion on the Eagles quarterback situation. We're going to look at the Washington football team with Zach Selby from the team's official website. Amazingly, Washington playing for an NFC East title. Doug Peterson, our weekly exclusive one-on-one interview in just a moment here. But first, let's begin with Miles Sanders, Eagles running back in his second NFL season. Injuries again have been a bit of an issue with Miles, who certainly has demonstrated that he is as explosive as any running back in the National Football League. He has made big plays, big runs, three of them of more than 70 yards in this 2020 season. Sanders looked like he had a shot last week of maybe, just maybe, getting to that 1,000-yard mark for the season. Do you know an Eagle running back hasn't hit the 1,000-yard mark since 2014, LaShawn McCoy? It would certainly take just a massive effort from Sanders to do so, and it's probably unlikely against one of the best defenses in the National Football League. That Washington football team is really tough. Miles comes into this game with some gaudy numbers, but it will be tough for him to get all the way to 1,000. He's got 867 yards. He's averaging 5.3 yards per carry. One area that's really dropped off since last year, his first year. He had 50 catches last year, only 28 of them in 2020. Sanders has missed three games, so he certainly wants to be more durable. And that's one of the questions that I ask him about. Do you want to be the best in the NFL? Here it is, one-on-one, with running back Miles Sanders. Miles, I I wonder what, in two years of NFL wisdom you've got now, what do you think are the keys to having long-term success for a player in the NFL? What did you learn? Uh, taking taking care of your body as much as possible. Um, no matter if it's a slight injury, major injury, or no injury, um, you just got to constantly, consistently take care of your body every single day. Have a routine throughout the whole week, throughout the whole day, every day, and just really cater to your body because that's what's because availability is the best ability. Is that hard for young players to do to have? I guess to have that kind of discipline or that kind of commitment to your body. Um, I, I would say it depends. I I don't say I wouldn't say last year had trouble doing that because you know we we have a lot of vets on this team, so um, I'm always in in their ears, uh, just just picking their brain, seeing what what I got to do to you know keep myself in this league. You know, especially having Darren Sproles here last year, he taught me how to take care of my body and his routine and stuff like that. And just making sure you just have a routine to cater to your body every day. Just do something, you know, and that's, that's, that's it. Miles, do you ever look around the league and say, Hey, I, I will be one day, or maybe I'm there already. One of the very best running backs in the NFL. Absolutely. I think about it every day. And do you think you're there? Uh, I want to say, uh, humbly, I would say no, no, no. Uh, I don't think I'm there yet because I don't get the recognition as a as a top five running back yet. So um, I'm I must keep working, and uh, one day I'll be I'll definitely be there. Why is that? Why is that important to you? Like, has that kind of always been? I mean, is it just you're a competitive guy and you always want to be the best player yeah. on the field in the league? Yeah, uh, just that competitiveness in me, and you know, I, I always believe when I step on that field, I'm the best player on the field. Uh, uh, play like it, you know, um, just just want to be one of those players where you feel feel their presence on the field and you know he easy ain't no way of slowing him down uh that's that's the type of player i want to be miles what's it been like for you this year just everything that's gone on the covid and the 
all the injuries up front and just the difficulty winning games. I mean, what have you learned about yourself, I guess, through this 2020 season? Uh, I don't know. I, I could say, honestly, I'm a little, uh, how can I say this? I'm the same guy I was before coronavirus. You know, <laughs> I always stayed in the house. I was always a homebody. And now the coronavirus hit, we have to stay in the house. So ain't nothing really changed with me, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> The, 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 the coronavirus just validated your lifestyle? Is that what you're saying? It's validated it. <laughs> made me really stay in the house, and I'm cool with that. <laughs> uh, Miles, how do you think you played this year? I could say decent. Um, I could. I feel like I could be a little bit more. I could be way more consistent, you know, every game. Just playing aggressive, playing more aggressive every game, every play. Yeah, honestly, just being more consistent throughout my whole game, really, whether it's uh, pass pro. Uh, catching the football, running the ball, just the the little things, chipping, you know, uh, routes, being disciplined on my routes of where I'm supposed to be, just being more consistent overall. Uh, I, I'm not going to say how, how good I've played or anything. I just really just like to talk about the stuff I need to work on, and and, and I'm far from, from where I want to be. It's interesting because last year, remember, you talked about how you wanted to get more north-south. I mean, the thing it seems like what you wanted to work on last year – you worked on it mm-hmm. and you got better at it. That's you got to be encouraged that you you're getting better and better and better and learning this game and and getting to the to the peak level that you can play. Yeah, absolutely. But um, you know, but I'm I'm still not where I want to be, and I'm I'm not going to get comfortable now. So, Miles, what's your mindset for for Sunday night and and finishing out this 2020 season? Hey, um, despite uh, the circumstances. Uh, we're, we're still playing this game that we love. We're still getting paid to play the game that we love. So why not go out there and give it your all, especially if it's the last one in the season? So that's that's where I'm at with it. Do you, would you even understand if somebody didn't have that mindset? Like anybody in the league, like you don't get these Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't understand if, it, if anybody didn't have that mindset. I think everybody should have that mindset in this building. You know, we still get an office, and it's prime time out there. So I, I really don't have to say too much. It's prime time, last game of the season. I mean, show the world. We got the world watching on the last game of the season. So give it y'all like it's the Super Bowl. Miles, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Once again, head coach Doug Peterson visits our weekly one-on-one talking about the Eagles as they look now and just how far away is this team from Super Bowl contention. Here's what head coach Doug Peterson thinks on the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Welcome, everyone, to our weekly visit with head coach Doug Peterson presented by Wawa. I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro. And Doug, for the first time since 2016, no playoffs for the Philadelphia Eagles. And for you, what goes through your mind as you put the Dallas loss behind you and look ahead to Sunday against Washington? Yeah, you know... um, I, I, I take the Dallas loss as sort of uh, how our season's gone, you know, and, and really, quite honestly, we, you know, we, we did some really good things in the game and we've done some really good things this season. Uh, but we have also had uh, we had a lot of opportunity in that football game, just like we've had this season. And, and we failed to uh, we failed to, you know, uh, complete the task. And um, it, it's kind of been. Uh, you know, it's been a frustrating and, and, and disappointing that way. Um, and then I think about the the amount of players that that couldn't finish the season. You know, and, and we got some good players that couldn't finish the season due to injury. And you know, guys get nicked up every <clears throat> every year, obviously. But but um, you know, we're getting we're getting some young guys in games that that are going to give us some and provide us with some with some depth. I think as we move forward into the into into next season, the off season in particular, and you know um, we have done some good things around here in, in the five years that I've been here, obviously, and um, we've brought brought some great wins here to this city and and, and to this organization. So that's something we got to get back to. Doug, uh, let's talk about some of those injuries. The offensive line, we are reminded again and again that you can have all the skill position people you want, but if you don't have a great offensive line, it is very difficult to execute the offense. So in the big picture, do you expect Brandon Brooks and Andre Dillard and Lane Johnson and Drac Driscoll next year to be 100%? You feel like this offensive line has the pieces in place to be great again? I, I do, and I, and I expect those guys to be out there and playing and and um, you know, building that continuity again, and and um, you know, having having success there, and, and and 
as long as that group stays healthy, I think you can do some really good things in your run game and in your passing game. And, and uh, again, that's that's been kind of our season, right? There's been flashes and, and, and glimpses of that all year long. It's just we just haven't been able to sustain that. And and uh, but yeah, I'm I'm very optimistic that that those guys make a make a full recovery. They return, they return to you know uh, playing dominating football, and and that's uh, that's the that's the encouraging part of of moving forward. Jalen Hurts made his third start of the season in Dallas. He'll finish up the regular season here on Sunday night against Washington. What did you see in start number three? What did Dallas maybe show him and the offense that he hadn't seen before? Well, I think I think you saw really the tale of two halves. You saw the first half being explosive offensively with it mixing the runs and pass. Jalen using his legs a little bit, some design runs in there. And then you go to the second half and, and Dallas made a couple of adjustments in the secondary and, and played a little more, you know, cover two, a little more shell and and um, you know, really kind of shut the run game down a little bit. But but at the same time, we also made, you know, a lot too many pre snap pre-snap penalties it cost us it cost us field position and it cost us yards and Dave we're just not at that point as a team offensively to really overcome a lot of those mistakes right now and, and so that's hurt us and it set us it set us back and and that was kind of the difference in the second half you know we we had opportunities we crossed the 50 yard line quite a bit um but just failed to execute and really finish finish the drive with uh, with points You've talked about Jalen and his cadence, and it's different than Carson's. Can you break that down for layman's terms, uh, what people might not understand? What can Jalen do better to, if there's anything he can do, to reduce the pre-snap penalties that others are committing? Well, I think the number one thing is just be loud, louder. You know, um, obviously, you know, we spend a lot of time in the shotgun, so you have to project your voice. And, and you know, it's different than in college, where college you see the, the hand clap a little bit more in college, right? And and uh, they all go off of that sound. Where where here we can't we can't do that, and that simulates, you know, simulate to cadence, or it could simulate getting the defense to jump off sides, and that's that's obviously a penalty. But um, you know, he he can be louder, and then and then just. The timing of of the cadence with his voice, his voice inflections, different timing, and you know, is he mixing up cadence enough, or is there a pause in there? It's all things that we just got to continue to work through and work with him on, and and, and then just you know, the guys just got to focus in on his voice and just listen listen to to how he uh, how he communicates and 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 just lock in uh, so that we can eliminate the pre snap penalties. Relatively speaking, is that an easy fix? It is. It is. And, and and it just comes through, you know, the repetition and practice, the more the more he continues to uh, get comfortable with the different cadences that we have. And and, and then again, uh, you know, the offensive line and, and tight ends who are close to uh, the ball, just listening and uh, understanding uh, the timing and rhythm of the cadence. Doug, how has Jalen been in the pocket through three starts? He, he's been good. Um you know, there there are some things that I think he can get better at. I think there's some anticipation things with guys coming open. You know, this is again NFL where, you know, lanes are going to be tighter, windows are going to be tighter, but you got to anticipate and and uh, those are all things that he'll get better at. The more uh, obviously the opportunity that, that he gets to play and, um, and and then just being able to scramble. You know, when things aren't aren't there, being able to elude the pocket and, and extend plays with his legs, extend yeah plays with his legs has been very beneficial. We've allowed us to stay on the field uh, in some key third downs. and uh, But, uh, yeah, the pocket stuff, you know, are things that uh, I think he, he, he can improve. Obviously, it's something he's uh, he didn't do a ton of in, in college, but he, he's, he's very capable of doing it and, and, uh, and completing more throws that way. Sunday night, you are in the role of spoiler. What does that mean to you? And if that is on national TV, does it maybe say to the guys, hey, you better put your best out there because the whole country is going to be watching? I, 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 yeah. I mean, that's the thing is is we still have a lot of pride. The guys have a lot of pride, and they're going to play for that. And and uh, we got a great opportunity to go out and, and, and finish you know finish the season on a high note. And um, like you said, in front of in front of a national audience. And and um, you know that's that's what we're, the guys are going to do. They're going to work hard this week. They're going to compete. They're going to you know understand the game plan and, and play on Sunday night. And and um, you know you're just trying to you're just trying to win the game. And in you, you know spoiler or whatever. I mean. Yeah, you're still going to compete, and Washington's a good football team, and and uh, they've they've played really well here down the stretch, and and uh, and rightfully so. Coach Rivera's got them playing 
really well, and and um, you know we're going to get their best, and and hopefully uh, we can we can do the same. Doug, I know your focus is on Washington, but what happens the day after? This game's going to end around midnight on Sunday, and then the day after is when players clean out their locker. Do you meet with every player that day? I don't necessarily meet with everybody. Um, I do want to meet with certain guys and and you know leaders of the team and and anybody that wants to come in and and, and chat and and uh, and do do the final you know. Uh, evaluations right there and and obviously a team meeting and then exit physicals and all that kind of stuff and it takes pretty much uh, the whole day to kind of get through all of that and and then really once you're once you're in after that it's just um, you know you're into off-season mode and and you're really you know you're focused on diving into your roster again and and evaluating the players and and um, you know Starting uh, the process, maybe even on potential free agents, and you just the thing the cycle just starts over, you know, and and uh, uh, you gear up for another season. Doug, you're used to being in the postseason. You've won a Super Bowl as a head coach. You won as a player. Uh, you know what it takes. So, how far away do you think this football team is from being a legitimate Super Bowl team? I, I do believe we're close. I, I, I do, and and. Um, you know, obviously, number one, we got to stay healthy, and and we've 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 got to we've got to eliminate the the mis- the mistakes that we've made this season. We got to learn from this season, and and we've got to take that and use that as fuel for motivation, and you know, as as we go into the off season, and 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 not only step away from the game for uh, several weeks or a couple of months, but once we get back together, we got to use that as as that fuel to say, hey, uh, enough's enough, and 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 let's learn from it. Let's 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 get better from it. Uh, we know we're going to add, you know, more talent and depth through the draft, through free agency, and and even our own roster with the amount of young players here at the end of the season that have played, and it's just going to give us uh, uh, the much needed, I think, boost going into going into 2021, and and uh, that's that's what I'm encouraged about. That's what I'm looking forward to, and and you know, you want to be competitive, and and uh, you you want to give yourself a chance. I, I even look at this season, Dave, and. And say we've had many opportunities this season to finish games and win games. Uh, we've been very competitive in games, and games have been close and come down to the fourth quarter. That's what we have to learn to overcome. That's what we have to learn to do better, and that's finish these games. And, and I think once we do that again, um, the results will be better. Doug Peterson, our weekly one-on-one presented by Wawa. Thanks so much for joining us, Doug. Good luck on Sunday night against Washington. Finish it up strong. Thank you, Dave. Tired of searching for sports updates in different places? The Xfinity Sports Zone gives you the ultimate sports hub experience where you can find games, news, and highlights all in one place right on your TV. Follow the teams you love across your favorite sports. You can even use the voice remote to access stats and scores. With the Xfinity Sports Zone, everybody wins. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store for details. Restrictions apply requires Xfinity TV service with X1. Jalen Hurts makes his fourth consecutive start at the quarterback position. He's done some good things, and then there are a lot of things that the Eagles need work on. And let's go through some of the things that Hurts had to say this week as he met the media. Topic number one, pre-snap penalties. They were an issue in Dallas. The Eagles committing six false start penalties. It's been an issue, and here's what Hurts has to say about improving in that phase of his game. Yeah, um, anything that, you know, anything that goes wrong um, offensively, you know, I take ownership for it. So it, it's something that I have to do better. We've been communicating with it. Um, obviously a different voice back there um, for some of the guys offensively. So it's just something that we're working on. In his college career at Alabama and Oklahoma, Hurts lost all of five games. He's lost two of his three starts. He doesn't want to get used to the feeling it's something that he says starts between the ears. Yeah, it's about attitude and mentality. Um, having the right attitude and mentality. Um, keeping your head down and seeing it all through. You know, knowing that you're always the master of your own faith. Going out there and just playing, controlling what you can. So I just try and, um, you know, live by those live by those things. Um, in the face of adversity, it's about how you respond to it. And, um you know, some things, some things come with time, but um, we're my head's down, um, and, and I'm just trying to work, work, work and win. Everything is about winning. In Hertz, three starts, the Eagles have scored 54 points in the first half collectively. 
and only 13 in the second half. So, yeah, being more consistent is a goal for number two. I think that's a matter of our our consistency within our execution, going out there and doing it consistently, um, having the, the right type of focus consistently throughout the game, everybody being locked in, you know, talk about these different penalties we've had. And all of them have been self, self-imposed, self you know, self-inflicted wounds. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that we can control. Um, and that's, that's why, you know, I harp on it being an opportunity for us to all learn from it. You know, you got to learn from it. It means nothing if you don't learn from it, you know, and, and I pride myself on learning from any <clears throat> any experience, whether it be good or bad. So that, I think that's the mentality we have moving forward, and that, that's, that's what we're going to do. And what are Hurts' thoughts as he looks forward to Sunday night against the football team on national television? What goals does he have as he puts that final bit of tape out there for the entire nation to see? You go out there and win, you know, um, within all of this stuff, you know, I'm, I, I, I'll always be my, my biggest critic, you know. I always, I always have had a standard for myself and the things that I do. And I think the mentality that we're, what we're trying to do, we just want to end it off on a high note. Um, I'm not sure what anybody else has said, but that's what we, I mean, that's where my head is. Ended off the right way. Have some pride. You know, have have some pride. Go out there and play this game. Have some passion. Show some passion. Go out there and, and let it hang. Um, let it hang. Go out there and play and let's get it done. All right, so that is Jalen Hurts. Now, let's continue with another dynamic quarterback from the Eagles past. The Eagles signing Michael Vick after he came out of federal prison. We remember for his involvement in dogfighting, a dogfighting scheme in Atlanta, and it was a disruption to what was a very successful career. Vic paid the price, came to Philadelphia, and he played some very good football. We visit with Michael Vick, our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week, talking about his time in Philadelphia and his opinion of what the Eagles are doing at the quarterback position. Vic and I spoke last week prior to the Eagles game at the Dallas Cowboys. The Eagles finishing the regular season against Washington, and we have our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week with us. Uh, Somebody who opened a season against Washington not too long ago and wowed the entire country. I welcome in former Eagles quarterback Mike Vick. Mike, welcome. Dave Spadaro with you. Long time no see. How are you, my friend? Yeah, it's been a long time, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Well, I mean, it's not a very good season, um, but... You know, you have some of these mixed in. I, I, why have you not come through the Novacare complex all these years? I've always wondered, coming back, walking through the hallways, reliving some very good seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, 2009 through 2013. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's been hard to get back for some reason. My wife's from Philadelphia, so I'm, I'm always uh, in the Philadelphia area. But it's always in the off season when, when the facilities is closed and but I will get back, man. I miss Philadelphia. It was one of my favorite places to play. Uh, the city was amazing, man. And uh, some some awesome memories. A lot of people ask me all the time, uh, what was my favorite place to play? And and you know, look, I, I love all the cities I played for. Atlanta, you know, did to my heart. But Philly, like the city, was it, it was amazing. So, um, you know, I was just blessed to be able to play for some great franchises, and, and definitely the Eagles was one of them. Uh, let's take it back to the very start, August thirteenth. 2009 you sign with the Eagles you come back to the NFL what does that date mean to you I mean it means a lot it means a lot for not only for myself but the people that was involved who helped uh that decision uh, be made and, and you know Mr. Lurie and Andy was at the forefront and you know obviously a lot of other people but man just to have the opportunity to to join the team um a flagship organization you know, who had a great quarterback at the time in Donovan McNabb and just good principles all across the board. Uh, you know, I felt that I felt, you know, being embraced and, and I felt the love and, and, and the compassion, um, you know, for what I had been through. And, uh, you know, I couldn't couldn't have landed in a better place and couldn't have been surrounded by the right people to, to, to help make those decisions happen. But for people, Michael, out there who are who need a second chance in life, I mean, it, it was not yeah. only the Eagles signing you. 
you did the work on the field. You did the work in the community, making your presence sure. known, talking to kids. I mean, what was that experience like for you, and how has it stayed with you to this day? Uh, it, it was an amazing experience because the things that I set out to do um, when I got to Philadelphia, I was able to accomplish every single thing on and off the field that I wanted other than winning the Super Bowl. Um, so, you know, I, I just made that commitment, and, and it was about second chances. It was about, um, you know, fulfilling my obligations to Andy and Mr. Lurie and, and, and holding up to my end of the bargain, and it was something that I told him that I, that I would make sure I put 100% priority into and, and I was able to do that, um, and, and nobody had to push me to do it. They didn't have to call on me, and you know, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? I was I was very proactive, and uh, you know, I meant what I said uh, when I when I made that promise. And thank God they gave me the opportunity. I'm I'm just so thankful and so blessed because I think those years helped catapult me to where I'm at now. The 2010 season, the Eagles trade Donovan to Washington. Kevin Cobb is the starter. He gets knocked out right behind me here at Lincoln Financial Field against the Green Bay Packers. You come in, you have a Pro Bowl season, the Eagles win the division. Of all that you have accomplished in the game of football, how how does that season rate for you? You know, what's so funny about that season. The only thing I can remember throughout that year prior to that September was just telling my wife, all I need is a chance, all I need is an opportunity and, and when Kevin went down, we were such good friends. I just wanted him to get up. You know, I want, I cared about his well-being and, and his health. And, uh, you know, when he couldn't finish the game, you know, I just said to myself, you know, thank God, you know, this is a great opportunity. I always wanted to play for Andy. I always wanted to be in a pass-heavy offense where I could throw the ball around. And, and I got my chance. And, and it was more about, you know, the guys I was playing with, you know, Jason Avant and, you know, Jason Peters and Jeremy Macklin and Sean McCoy and, and Deshaun Jackson, Brent Selleck, you know, Todd Hermans. And like th those those were my guys, man. And, and uh, you know, we, we had a, we had a great time together. We had fun in the huddle, out the huddle. And, and it's, it's, it, for us, I know that's a season to remember. I know they uh, they all went on and had better seasons and we all had great seasons. But that was one where, you know, we kind of gelled and we kind of appreciated being in the huddle together. It was also fun in 2013, starting the season with Chip Kelly as the head coach with that offense in Washington, nationally televised game. You had two touchdown passes, one run. Eagles take off offensively. Did you think it was going to last forever? Yeah, I thought it was going to last forever. I thought that game right there was going to set the precedent for our team throughout the course of the season. And, uh, you know, the very next week I came back and passed with 400 yards against the San Diego and, 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 a, and a losing effort. And then Andy came back to town and, and, and that didn't go well. Uh, you know, went to Denver and, and in New York and then all of a sudden pull a hamstring and Nick Foles take over. And it still was a great season. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I was thankful to be a part of that. And just the experience alone, even though it didn't work out with Chip Kelly, I learned a lot. From him as a man, I learned a lot of core principles from Chip, and I, I, I don't think, you know, he was a bad person, just not the right fit at the time for us. Mike, the next wave of quarterbacks has come, has arrived here in the NFL. They all, of course, watched you, grew up watching you, loved watching you, emulated you, and there is a wave of mobile quarterbacks who are also excellent throwers. Uh, what are you seeing from this young group, and what is their key to success for long-term NFL greatness? Well, I think it's just, uh, you know, everybody year after year is just kind of marveling at each other's game and, and trying to pattern it, duplicate what, what, what you know, I started and what they're, they're finishing. And, you know, they're doing it at such a high level. I think they're doing it even better now um, because they're playing with a lot of poise, you know, as they play with a dual threat mentality. Um, they're playing with a lot of competence and, and, and a great understanding of the game and, and awareness around them. You know, I think the cool part about it is, you know, these guys are being dual threats, but, you know, they're not putting themselves in harm's way. You know, they're sliding. You know, they, they're making the game look good as they go out and play the game. And, and I think that's special. So, you know, as I revolutionized it, these guys are continuing to revolutionize it. And, and you know, it, it's becoming a dual threat league. And I think for, for the most part, quarterbacks... You got to be able to move these days. You got to be able to keep to keep the chains moving and moving the sticks, and and it's very important. And it, it's it's going to be a trend and the norm in the NFL in the next you know three to five years. I don't. Did, did you grow up watching Randall? Did you see a lot of him? Did was his game important to you as you developed your skills? 
kind of, sort of. You know, I'll be honest. You know, I was a Randall Cunningham fan for for a lot of reasons, and, and you know, we probably all know why. Um, running quarterback, you know, black quarterback. Um, you know, didn't see too many of them back then, but you know, being honest, you know, I, I I didn't think that was the way the game was supposed to be played. First off, you get hurt. You know, second off, you know, it's not what John Elway was doing. Well, John Elway was doing it to a certain degree. I take that back. Yeah. But but when you look at you know guys like uh, you know I'm just Joe Montana and and, and uh, you know Bobby Abed, Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar. I didn't see those guys running the f- football. I seen them passing it. So you know my mindset was was to pass the football. But when I seen Randall doing it, you know I seen more run than pass at times, and I was a little confused. But as time went on, and then we got you know Steve McNair and 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 and, and um, you know Randall came back and revitalized his career, and then Donovan came into the league. Dante Cole Pepper, you know I, I seen the game starting to change, and I felt like my game could fit. Jalen Hurts, rookie quarterback, tough situation in Philadelphia. He seems yeah. to have come out of it very positively. What are your thoughts on Jalen and? And his career and what he's shown you so far? Yeah, I, I like what Jalen has been able to show. Uh, I think he gives uh, Doug valuable options. I think he gives the offense opportunity. He opens it up with his running ability. I mean, you know, you probably can go from, you know, a, a, a call sheet of 50 plays to 100 um, because of what Jalen Hurts brings to the table. And, and then, he, you know, he's a young guy. He, he's, he's young. He's, he's fresh. He, he has a great understanding of the game. He's going to be a good passer of the football being with Doug anyway, because that's what that's what Doug um, puts on display. That's one of his expertise. And then adding the run game to it now it gives some, some it gives Doug valuable options. It's, it's, he's a second round pick, and I know Carson is there. And it, you know, don't, things will work itself out naturally. And I, I don't think that's something they need to be worried about right now. You know, good thing is you you got two good quarterbacks. You know, you, you don't have a quarterback problem. Mike Vick, we watched you out here on Lincoln Financial Field. We watch you now on Fox Sports and FS1. Uh, and, and you were so great as a Philadelphia Eagle on and off the field, so cooperative with us. It's great to catch up with you. Please don't be a stranger. Get back to Philadelphia. Get back to the Novacare Complex. We'd love to yeah. see you soon. I'll be back in 2021 for sure. Mike Vick, our Microsoft Teams Eagles Legend of the Week. Happy holidays to you, and thanks for joining. Thank you. Happy holidays. The Eagles opened the 2020 season against Washington. It was a tough day, 27-17 loss. A lot of things went wrong that day. Eagles sacked eight times. Carson Wentz throwing two interceptions. Eagles not able to stop Washington in the red zone. Some untimely penalties. Things that would follow the Eagles throughout this 2020 season. Here now, a first look at the Washington football team. Just one win away from capturing the NFC East. My guest, Zach Selby, from the football team's official website. Zach Selby, let's talk about the Washington football team, the Eagles bookending the 2020 season against them. Uh, the team that we saw on the opening weekend, I, I just thought was really going to be in for a long, long season. I got to give Ron Rivera credit, give that young defensive line credit, give everybody credit. That team has put itself in position where you're one win away from making the playoffs. How has that happened amid all of the turmoil that Washington has faced this year? Well, it, it, there, it has been a lot this year for sure. And I think there, there are a couple of things, more of a cheesy reason and more of like a more analytic football reason. The cheesy one is that they're starting to believe in the things that Ron Rivera is teaching them. I mean, this is a young team, you have to remember. And it's not, it's not like you, you win in week one with a preseason and, and, a, and a full training camp and all this other stuff. It was really abbreviated to you know the, the worst degree possible. So it took a little bit for them to really sort of understand and comprehend the, the, the techniques and skills that Ron Rivera was asking of them to, to achieve. And then you, you really started to see a, a change in them. I think it was about that Cowboys game. You know, at first when they won 25-3, to 3, they realized, that, okay, hey, you know, this is something that we're starting to kind of understand. Like, this is, this is, there's something to this method. And then, you know, it really kind of started to, to, to get more traction with that four-game winning streak. And I think it's, it's at this point, they know they can win if they stick to the technique. And that's a really big thing for a young team. The other thing is, speaking of those young players, is that they're starting to come on now and really start to be the, the realize the potential that Rivera saw in them whenever they were getting drafted. I mean, look at 
look at Antonio Gibson, for example. I mean, this is a guy who has 11 rushing touchdowns. I mean, at one point before he got hurt, he was leading leading rookies in that category. And the Logan Thomas on the free agent side is this was a guy that Pete Hainer, our tight ends coach, really circled and said, look, this is a guy that is on the cusp of being really good. And all of a sudden he's going out there and he's really one of their top receiving options. And especially, you know, a couple weeks ago against the Seahawks, I mean, he had a career day. Uh, with 101 uh, receiving yards. So it's really a combination of all, all things, but it really is at this point now where you're, you're in you're in late December, early January, and it's it's peaking at the right moment. Zach, it's also helped that Alex Smith has stabilized, at the very least, a quarterback position that with Dwayne Haskins, you weren't getting very good football play there. What has Alex meant to Washington's offense, to the locker room, and then how is it looking for him this weekend? Well, you know, as far as how it looks for him this weekend, I mean, from what we've heard, he was close to going this past weekend, but he felt some of that soreness again in his right calf, which he has said has had nothing to do with his surgically repaired, you know, injury and all that other stuff. So that's a positive sign. But the soreness was still there, so they wanted to kind of save him just because they wanted they wanted to, to protect him. And it looks like he they they're optimistic that he can go this week, but today will today will be able to tell us a lot about where he is. Uh, but as far as what he's been able to do for this offense, I mean, it's it's really been something special to see because he, first of all, he's a veteran leader. I mean, he's 36 years old. I mean, he's been around the NFL multiple times over and been successful pretty much at different points wherever he's been. And the biggest that you have that experience on top of that with the fact that it's a young team, like I said earlier, and they really look to him as being their their guy, their their leader to show them how to to win in the NFL, which is big for them right now. And the other thing is that he's distributing the ball really well. I mean, if you look at some of his stats, they're not they're not necessarily great. Um, you know, he's thrown for under 200 yards a couple of times this year. But there was a cool stat where he's – I think he's only lost one game where they've he's completed 65% of his passes or and, and thrown for under 200 yards. And that's because he, he takes care of the football when he's playing like that, and he's distributing the ball around to their playmakers. And he knows that players like J.D. McKissick, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, they're all talented young guys that when they get the ball in their hands, they can get some things going and, and get some traction out there. So it, it to me, it looks like you know, his leadership is going to be big, especially now when, when you're going to be on probably arguably the biggest stage in football right now, the last game, let the true last game of the regular season with playoffs on the line. I mean, it's, it's good. That veteran leadership and the ball distribution is going to be so crucial to the offense. Zach, no doubt the defense has, is really what the team is built around. And we saw it in week one, eight quarterback sacks, everybody wowed by that front. Uh, has it played at a consistently high level? And what kind of progress have you seen from the likes of Chase Young and what I think three other first round draft picks, former first round draft picks on the line. Just how good well, are they up front? And they have they been dominating all year? Yeah, yeah, but for the most part they really have. Now they've they've had some games where, you know, against the Pittsburgh Steelers but well they didn't get a sack. And they also had one against the Seahawks so they didn't get a sack as well. But you know, Pittsburgh has one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Um and then the Seahawks they have Russell Wilson and he knows how to avoid pressure when he needs to but the big thing that you have to remember about those games, even though they didn't get a sack, is that they were able to alter the game in other ways. I mean, you know, against that against, against the Steelers, you know, they were getting their hands up, batting down balls. And in fact, the the really the game ceiling play came from a Montez Sweat bat up in the air that was caught and intercepted by John Bossick. And then the the play the play against the Seahawks that really started to kind of get things to swing more towards the comeback area was when Montez uh, batted up another ball and then Deron Payne came around and just dived, dived under it and, and really uh, got, got the momentum going in their direction. But in terms of rushing the passer, they've, for the most part, they've been there. I mean, they had four sacks against the Panthers and, you know, they, I think they've, they've had five multiple times this season um, against the Giants and I think against the Cowboys as well. So it, it's kind of streaky sometimes, uh, but for the most part, it's been consistent. And the big thing is, is that they're, you know, and Rivera talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is that they're ascending at the right point because they're starting to, they're starting to get broken of the uh, quote unquote broken of the old habits that they've been trying, they were holding on to. I um, mean, and, you know, Sam Mills, the defensive line coach is a very established guy. I mean, he's, he's been, you know, he led the Panthers to, you know, having some of the best sack uh, defensive lines 
in the NFL for multiple years. And it, he, they're really starting to embrace the fact that he's teaching them something different. And with the talent that they have, you know, it's really starting to come on and kind of mesh together. And as far as Chase Young is concerned, you know, he doesn't necessarily have the sacks that, that people thought he would with only six and a half. I, was going to say, I say only six and a half. But, you know, if people expect him to have more. But at the same time, he's had four fumbles. He's had a touchdown. He's had recoveries. I mean, he really is the, the deep the player of the year front runner, in my opinion, just because of not because of his pass rushing ability, but because he's a, an all-around guy that's changing the defense in the way that Rivera thought he would whenever they drafted him. All right, Zach, finally, I mean, is Washington ready for this moment um, to go and win a game and get into the postseason? Uh, improbably, I don't think anybody felt that Washington was a team in the NFC East, but here you go. Is this football team ready? That is that is going to be the million-dollar question. And, I, you know, the spotlight was, was kind of on them last week, and they didn't really rise to the occasion. But I would say, and Rivera would say this as well, is that, the other time when they were Thanksgiving against the Cowboys and an altered Monday Monday night ish game against the, the Steelers when they with, with the Steelers being undefeated they did rise to the occasion I mean they blew out the Cowboys in a very convincing fashion and then they you know they grinded out and beat the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers and hounded that uh that that offense in a way that people hadn't really been able to do and then on offense against the Steelers they were able to find a way to, to score points in unconventional ways and, 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 and figure, out, figure out how to get past that really, really good secondary that Pittsburgh has. So I think they are ready. History would tell you that they are. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this is still a young team, so they really have to go out there and, and prove it because, again, this is probably, probably the biggest stage they'll, they'll, they'll have seen all year. And if if they can do it, it'll, it'll be a tremendous accomplishment. And in my opinion, if they do that, Ron Rivera is a coach of the year uh, candidate, in my opinion. Uh, but you know, if if they can do that, it's going to be it's going to be a great start to to what Rivera wants to build in this in this city and with this franchise. It's amazing to me, Zach. I wrote about it the other day that that September 13th game, you saw things in the Eagles: the turnovers, losing momentum, not stopping Washington in the red zone penalties at the wrong time, things that have carried over, and that's why the Eagles are 4-10-1. And, and I imagine you saw some promising things that day that Washington is built upon, and while it hasn't been easy, while it hasn't been great, you're playing for a division title. Yeah, it's, it's, that, that game has really almost been indicative of the way the entire season has gone. It's, it's pretty much 2020 in a nutshell, essentially, going down by double digits, come, coming back with some crazy comebacks, and I mean, you saw the promise that a lot of these that a lot of these players have, and you know again, I think this is going to be one of those situations where if they can, if they can find a way to get pull out this win, it's going to be it's going to be massive, not just for this team, not just for the city, but for a lot of the players who are who are church who are trying to build something and trying to make their way in the league as well. Zach, thanks so much. Uh, I wish I was going to see you on Sunday, but I'm not going to obviously. And um, happy New Year to you. I, I would say good luck, but. We want the Eagles to win, so not too much luck, anyway. But yeah, one day, one day we will be able to see each other in person. Uh, but yeah, it's always exactly. great talking to you. Dave. I appreciate it. Take care, man. That will do it for this episode of the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. It's our tailgate edition as we get you ready for the season finale Sunday night at Lincoln Financial Field on national television. We've got you covered on PhiladelphiaEagles.com and our official app, as well as our social channels throughout the day, beginning with our kickoff show presented by Exalta. Tune in, if you would, at 7.30. So we're ready to roll with that. And then we've got the post-game show presented by Rico immediately after the game, live reaction from the team at Lincoln Financial Field. I want to thank Peter Kelly, Ray Doyle, and Trevor Hayes for their work on the podcast. Thank all of you, of course, for joining us each and every episode I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro. If you have a moment to give us a review, we would appreciate it. The link is in your details in your podcast library. We'll be back on Sunday night. Well, actually, Monday morning with our instant reaction podcast from Lincoln Financial Field. The Eagles finishing the 2020 season against the Washington football team. Thanks for joining, everyone. Have yourselves a great Eagles day. And fly, Eagles, fly. Eagles looking to finish 2020 with a win and then a whole lot of questions to answer in the 2021 offseason. 
Eagles! Raise a glass to that comforting feeling of an Eagles touchdown with the all-new Broad and Patterson Wine Collection created in partnership with Wink. Featuring a Cabernet, a Rosé, and a Chardonnay, Broad and Patterson wines are the perfect pairing for any occasion. Now you can bring the sweet taste of victory with you to a dinner with friends or to the tailgate with your game day crew. Purchase online today at philadelphiaeagles.com slash wine to stock up and have Broad and Patterson delivered right to your door. A portion of proceeds from every bottle benefit Eagles Autism Foundation.